Hey there, beautiful souls. Welcome back to a space just for you. Today, let's talk about something we all face, stress and burnout. I'm here to share tips on making life a bit lighter and brighter. Ready? Let's dive in. Why does it seem like you spend most of your time in bed, lying down and not doing much lately? Are you someone who easily gets tired and doesn't feel like doing anything? Do you label this kind of behavior as mere laziness and nothing more? There's actually a lot of overlap between laziness and burnout that can make it difficult to differentiate between the two. Burnout is a negative state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive stress and inability to cope with it. And as of 2010, a survey reported that approximately 75% of adults in the United States alone have experienced symptoms of burnout, with over 40% of cases being more severe. Now, more than ever, it's become imperative to educate and better understand the nature of burnout. So with that said, here are six telltale signs that what you're experiencing right now isn't actually laziness, but burnout. Number one, you feel disconnected from everything. Are you going through the motions of every day as if on autopilot? Is there a persistent feeling of being detached from your own self? If you're suffering from burnout, one of the things you might be experiencing but don't quite realize or understand is depersonalization. People experiencing depersonalization, most commonly those struggling with trauma, report feeling a strange sort of emotional numbness or emptiness, as if they were watching life from outside of themselves. They don't feel like themselves anymore. They don't feel engaged by anything and they constantly struggle with the overwhelming sense of helplessness and inability to take back control of their lives. Number two, you used to be motivated. Laziness is a character trait and character traits tend to remain stable over time. A lazy person does never feel like exerting effort or applying themselves to things. But if you used to be self-motivated and high achieving, often excelling in certain areas, and have only recently become exhausted, apathetic, and unmotivated, then it's more likely that you're suffering from burnout and not laziness like most people would think. Number three, you used to be passionate. A clear difference between someone who's burnt out and someone who's lazy is that the former used to have things they were passionate about, but may now be struggling to find interest or enjoyment in anymore. Whether it's a talent, a sport, or just your academic or professional performance in general, burnout can make it hard for you to do the things you once loved or felt passionate about. You might even come to hate or resent it because of how much you overworked yourself and pushed yourself to the brink because of it. Ouch. Number four, you've become moody and irritable. Do you suddenly find yourself snappy and easily irritated? Do you often feel emotionally out of control nowadays and don't know why? Moodiness and irritability are common but often overlooked signs of burnout. So if you start to have trouble controlling your emotions, especially when it never used to be a problem for you, this might be the reason why. Lazy people, on the other hand, are a stark contrast to this because they're often very relaxed, laid back, placid, and unaffected by things. Number five, you've neglected your self-care. One of the most distressing warning signs that someone may be emotionally and physically burnt out is if you start neglecting your self-care and socially withdraw from others. There are concerning changes in your eating and or sleeping patterns. You stop making an effort to groom yourself or look good, and you tend to spend most of your time by yourself doing nothing, because you're so easily exhausted by even the simplest of tasks. The difference between being burnt out and laziness are starkly in the fact that you weren't always this way. And number six. These changes happened gradually. Finally, but perhaps most importantly, something you should know about burnout is that it develops in stages. So all of the points mentioned before, losing interest and motivation, especially in things we used to love, feeling detached from yourself and disconnected from everything around you, socially withdrawing and neglecting your self-care, won't just happen overnight. Studies show that there are actually five major stages of burnout, each with increasing degrees of severity. The honeymoon phase, the onset of stress, chronic stress, burnout, and habitual burnout. Many people begin to experience symptoms as early as the second phase, when there is still a moderate amount of stress but optimism, interest, motivation, and performance may already start declining. And by the time you reach the fifth and final stage, burnout has already become so embedded in your life that the persistent mental and physical fatigue become more intense and harder to treat, making you more vulnerable to developing depression and anxiety. Spotting the signs of burnout early makes it all the more easier for you to get help and recover from it. That's why it's so important to raise awareness about burnout instead of simply dismissing it as laziness, like most people tend to do.
So if you or anyone you know may be suffering from mental or emotional burnout, please don't hesitate to reach out to a mental health care professional today and talk to them about it. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts, experiences, and suggestions, and share it with those out there battling the haze of burnout. Burnout. It's finally getting recognition as an actual thing. It's not just a buzzword. It's not something made up. It's real, and it's more common than you may think, affecting people worldwide regardless of age or gender. Burnout. You might think of a candle's blackened, shriveled, worn-out wick. If you feel how that wick looks, you can likely relate to burnout. These here are some ways to hopefully keep that candle wick conditioned, helping to avoid burnout. The best way to deal with it is to not get to that point in the first place. So number one, figure out what is stressing you. We're going to use the word avoid and just clarifying, avoiding a stressor is not the same as avoiding responsibilities. A responsibility needs to be done but you don't have to go about doing it in a stressful manner. See what we mean? The best way to reconfigure this stressful process is whittle down and figure out what it is that's causing the stress. Here's a simple example. It's easy to say, this assignment is my stress. Getting it done is stressing me out. But when you step back, you realize the situation is more, I'm stressed because I feel tight on time and I'm tight on time because I repeatedly chose other activities until there were only 24 hours left to get this done. So yes, you may require some time to practice self-awareness as much as we never like to admit it. We sometimes build a whole lot of unnecessary stress for ourselves. So please don't do this to yourself. Number two, complete the cycle. I know this sounds like we're suggesting you allow yourself to get more stressed, but we're not. Trust me, we're not. Burnout occurs because of prolonged, unending stress. It's essentially constantly treading water in the worst spot and never swimming to shore for rest. This is what we mean by complete the cycle. The book Burnout by PhD and DMA Nagoski twins describes the cycle generally as, enter the stressor, like tight turnaround times. Then cortisol and adrenaline production are triggered from the stressor. This activates the survival response of fight, flight, or freeze. Impulsive reactive behavior happens to stop the feeling of ah! which can be binging, eating, or streaming. We're not judging. And then completion is taking the step of meditative breathing, connecting with others, or other forms of emotional release. Burnout happens when you get stuck at the binging step. That impulsive action provides temporary, superficial relief. Just enough to fool many of us into thinking, oh, we're all good now. Truthfully, the stress is still there under now, allowing it to continue frying and smoldering within. Number three, sleep. If you had nap time in kindergarten, don't you wish that was still a normal part of your day? Sleep. Sleep is wonderful. Sleep is also important. A solid, healthy stretch of nighttime sleep is essential to overcoming or avoiding burnout. Humans are generally not nocturnal by nature. We know this, yet we seem to be all too willing to sacrifice sleep as the first bartering chip when dealing with stress. We tend to think of sleep as a reservoir easily refilled with catching up on the weekend or sleeping in on vacation. Unfortunately, sleep just does not work that way. You can't retcon the past sleep you lost by sleeping more in the future. So get a good sleep in the now. What is good sleep anyway? It's not that time you zoned out while reading, then woke up with a start when your forehead hit the desk. It is completing a full sleep cycle, including REM sleep. The result is you wake feeling refreshed and renewed. If you wake up still groggy or wanting to throw down in anger, you did not have a good night's sleep. To help you reach this fabled good sleep, employ sleep hygiene and prep. Hygiene is basically a condition conducive to maintaining health. So sleep hygiene is good sleep practices, like no screens 30 minutes before bed and the room being dark, cool, and silent. Prep is what happens before the hygiene, setting yourself up physically and mentally. So no numbing shortly before bed and perhaps a short session of meditation to quiet your mind. Your route is yours. These are just components. Find ones that groove with you. And number four, release the oxytocin. Perform activities that help produce oxytocin. Yes, oxytocin, the love jug. Well, hormones really. 
It's been found that various activities such as giving to others, dancing, working out, or cuddling with your pet all trigger oxytocin production. Know why we suggest this? Basically because the activities not only make you happy, but many of the activities can help others be happy too. Oxytocin is one of the big three happy hormones after all. It's been found too that this hormone can decrease stress and anxiety. So it gives happy and deducts stress and anxiety. Win-win. And number five, know that you're worth it. Those old shampoo commercials out of point. You are worth it. Yep, our last tip for today is to practice self-love. Self-love can help you extend compassion towards yourself, allowing you to perform self-care free of guilt or adding more stress. Never feel that tending to your own health is a waste of time or that you could be doing something more important. You are the most important thing to you. Your existence depends on it. Burnout can happen to anyone. It does not matter if you're in school or at a job or trying to get your own business going or a mom or a dad. Burnout is a creeper that can pounce when you least expect it, happening to the seemingly healthiest of us. We mean you're not alone or defective or inept. Burnout essentially means that your own personal care has been sacrificed in pursuit of outward rewards, whether that pressure has been put on you by yourself or by a boss. Take a moment to realize that nothing is worth your health and that you deserve to be happy no matter how much the bottom line is going to affect quarterly profits. You got this and we're with you on that. Did you see or hear something that could help you or someone you know? Comment below and give us a like. Take a break and reach out to others for help. And we hope you found something helpful here. Maybe we'll take a breather together again next time. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, taking small steps can make a big difference. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.